Welcome back. Let's alkylate some enolates. What I mean by that is let's take a ketone uh, and rip off an H that is one carbon away from the carbon that has a double bonded oxygen. We call this the alpha carbon, and this H is very or more easily ripped off than you would expect considering it's a carbon hydrogen bond that's being broken. Now I'm going to ignore what I've put in purple here. I've got uh, something on the other side here. I've got <clears throat> two other things in this carbon. I'm going to pretend they're not there. What I end up with is a negative, negative charge on that carbon there. I've ripped off an H plus after all with this base. Now What's significant about that is that I have electron delocalization here. I can get some of the electrons, uh, I can push those electrons into the double bond and push these electrons from this pi bond onto the oxygen. And what I end up with is a double bonded, well, two carbons double bonded to each other. And this oxygen has a minus charge on it. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna draw it a second time here because I'm gonna need it for another mechanism. But because we have electron delocalization, this conjugate base of this molecule is a little more stable and that's what helps to make this hydrogen more acidic. Anyways, if you know anything about enols, you already knew that was gonna happen. What I'm here to tell you is that this lone pair that is now on the carbon atom can attack an alkyl group that is attached to a halogen. This halogen is delta minus, that makes this slightly delta plus, and it is a nucleophilic attack displacing or substituting the I. In that case, we end up with the double bonded oxygen with the carbon, and that carbon is now bonded to an R group. And we have an I minus that has been displaced. We've added a carbon chain onto a carbon. We've been able to extend the carbon chain. We love it when we can do that in organic chemistry because it is a little more rare than uh, other kinds of reactions. We call this C alkylation because we've added the carbon or we've added the R group to the carbon. Here we have the minus charge shown to be on the oxygen and it could theoretically attack the R as well. Double bond here, O with an R. Here we have an ether that has a double bond a little farther down the chain. We still have the I minus created and we call this O alkylation. Cool. Now, one other mechanism for this very top one is starting with this charge on the O that lone pair goes back into the double bond and the extra pair of electrons that's currently in the pi bond here goes to attack the R. Little one step mechanism here. You end up with the same product as we got above. It's just a different way you can rationalize having gotten it, still see alkylation. Now, a couple things I wanna point out and I've made the notes up here if you can read them. Um, so that I don't forget anything. I want to mention that this is an SN2 nucleophilic attack, which means it's a one-step mechanism. This attacks the R at the same time that the I leaves, and it works best on primary uh, alkyl halides. What that means is that you're best to have maybe a straight chain of carbons with an I on it, or you could have a benzene, with a carbon and then the halogen attached to that carbon. You could even have what we call an allylic halide, which means the I is connected to a C, which is connected to another C that has a double bond. As long as the carbon that the halogen is attached to is only attached to one other carbon, it's primary and this will be the dominant mechanism. If this was a secondary alkyl halide or a tertiary alkyl halide, you'll probably end up with elimination, not substitution. And in that case, uh, the enolate hasn't reacted at all. It just, it just stole the H back from the molecule 
reform this and you ended up with some random alkene that you never expected. Cool? So you can alkylate enols, preferably that came from ketones. If you start with an aldehyde, it's going to do an aldol condensation instead. But start with a ketone, rip off the alpha hydrogen with a strong base, then react it with a primary alkyl halide or something primary with a halogen on it, and you'll be able to attach it probably to the C, sometimes to the O. I'm not exactly sure how we choose between these two, but it's an SN2 substitution, and you can extend the carbon chain or make ethers exactly in this way. That's how it goes, mechanism-wise and everything. Enjoy life. Best of luck. Make some enols. Don't get arrested. Cheers.